Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar, we'll go through the UK Met Office run, have a look at the 5 day precipitation and temperature and then we'll have a look at the medium to long range looking at the various models and the ensembles as well as April and the start of May, or the end of April and start of May, looks like it's going to be continuing to be quite dry, it's going to be pretty chilly around, especially over the next few days and into the into next week as well and there's quite a high chance we see quite a few frosts in some regions and there could be some nights where we see actually quite widespread frosts potentially dangerous conditions if you do have plants out there or crops that um are quite sensitive to the cold weather and of course there could be some icy stretches out there and of course being end of april early may not many people are going to be expecting that really it's sort of a thing we'd expect in december to sort of february time not so much end of april start of may so there could be some issues out there a little bit um, especially if you are in more rural areas um, as well but apart from that it does look like it's going to be quite dry and we will see plenty of sunny weather for some others may get more unlucky with thicker cloud amounts but it's very difficult to tell um, especially more than a day or two out but we'll still have a look at that as well so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure to like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description so we do start on the live radar it's another reasonably dry day a little bit chillier today with thicker cloud around for quite a few especially through central areas and of course across the northeast where we have more of a northeasterly breeze with quite chilly upper air conditions so that's why those temperatures are a bit down today only sort of low teens so slightly below average for most and yeah there are a few showers around in the northeast there was some across northeast england earlier this morning and they have faded away and there are just a few around in scotland northeast england northern coast and a couple in southern ireland where we do have a bit of thicker cloud now you can see the cutoff lows that are sitting below the high pressure we have over the top of the uk still producing heavy showers and storms across parts of Port portugal spain dissipates a little bit in france but a few across germany into Austria and Switzerland, a bit into Italy as well. And these systems are just sort of milling around. Uh, and of course, this is why we were looking at uh, previous to this pattern setting up those cutoff lows to potentially, potentially being closer to the UK because we could have seen conditions similar to this. But luckily, we are nearer to the higher pressure, so it means it's drier, but also means we're in chillier air masses as well. But you can see to our northeast, real wintry conditions across Scandinavia with heavy wintry showers, snow showers for most, even along the coast, as we do have the remnants of winter just in Norwegian Sea, very close to the UK, and that sort of air we're going to be tapping into. Nowhere near we're going to get to these conditions. We're not even going to get remotely close to snow for uh, for anywhere, apart from maybe the highest peaks of some mountains in Scotland. No one is going to have any chance of seeing any wintry conditions, really. Um, but uh, we are going to be tapping into this sort of Arctic air over the coming weeks um or the next sort of week or two so it's going to be more frost as i said and chillier feel to the air so we do have a look at the temperatures as well now as you see with the temperatures they're a little bit lower today very few orangey colors of uh, and more yellows across the west midlands and northwest england central southern england further eastwards and northwards where we have that more of an easterly breeze a little bit chillier so best weather across the south coast uh, and in well probably a little bit just inland from the far south from the far coast because of course with high pressure around um, and not too much dominant sort of breeze out there it does mean sea breezes can dominate across the coastal areas cooling temperatures down so right along the coast it's probably is a little bit chilly if you go a little bit inland you can see some yellows and maybe a hint of orange there so getting up and towards sort of 15 16 degrees it is you can see uh, uh, it's gone in fahrenheit for some reason but around 60 fahrenheit so sort of like 14 15 16 degrees inland but more widely 13 14 degrees across the west midlands a little bit uh, decent as well and across northwest england that has been a pretty decent spot in around sort of st helens wigan formby southport that sort of area it's been very good over the last couple of days and i keep talking about it because we've got the fern effect of course on in this sort of region most areas are pretty chilly with blues and then you see this little yellow blob uh, and of course it's just so the orographics giving this area slightly enhanced temperatures um, and it could be majorly enhanced temperatures a few days ago but elsewhere you see more blues mixing in so chillier conditions down to more towards sort of 12 13 degree highs look quite chilly indeed really so not 
particularly great. And this sort of conditions will continue over the coming days. So we do have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at precipitation and temperature over the next five days. Now you can see with those showers, with we had those showers in the northeast that have faded over the course of the afternoon. And you can see most areas are under thicker cloud today and it's held those temperatures down, as I said. Now over the course of the evening, cloud will break and we could be seeing first night of proper frost in a few regions and we'll have a look at that with the temperatures in a minute beyond that and tomorrow afternoon a few showers across southern Ireland, but most areas dry once again some thicker cloud some sunny breaks as well and when we see the sunnier breaks that will lift the temperatures by a degree or two so yeah quite variable conditions um, for many and then as we had a look through thursday could be another overnight frost in regions before thursday afternoon temperatures um, will be again pretty chilly because we've got real thick cloud across many areas a few showers further northwards as well and as we head into friday you can see more showers across the far north less cloud for central southern areas so perhaps warmer temperatures potentially for a time but if you look out to our northwest just out there you can see precipitation and thicker cloud building in and this is a low pressure system that is likely to skirt through scotland northern ireland and northern england towards the end of the working week and the weekend and that's this little low pressure system that's embedded within the higher pressure and as it moves around the higher pressure it's going to pull that cold air in from the north and that's why we do have a little bit of uncertainty with how much that of that cold air does get in so we do have a look at that system moving in you can see initially just a bit of band bands of heavier rain and then as we head through saturday more widespread precipitation moved through so we could be seeing Persistent rain for some. Doesn't look amazingly heavy, and it doesn't look like it's going to cause any issues, but persistent rain for many areas, potentially, through Saturday and Sunday. Now, it is four or five days away, so things can still change, but it does look likely we're going to be seeing some proper precipitation for many, as it has been very, very dry recently. The general theme still is for dry weather. After this, it still does look dry again, but we could just see a temporary blip through Saturday and Sunday in the north, and potentially moving further southwards as well. So do have a look at these max temperatures. Now you can see this afternoon temperatures peaking around 15, 16 degrees and that sort of slither of southern England that I uh, talked about. Um, again, my, uh, microclimates can be a little bit mild in this. So some areas are sending the far northwest getting more towards 14, 15 degrees, even though it only shows 12 degrees here. Because of course, this is high resolution, but it's not quite as high resolution um, uh, that we probably would need in this sort of scenario. But you can generally see where the warmer temperatures are and along the North Sea coast, only seven eight degrees quite chilly indeed and even in land in sort of east midlands 12 13 degrees tonight those temperatures will fall and as i said it's the first chance of a proper frost across northern england perhaps parts of southern ireland and parts of scotland as well where we see those clearer skies we could be seeing a frost and again these are more macro um, temperatures even though they are uh, from a high resolution model there's more likely to there's likely to be more local variation. So some areas where it's showing three or four degrees could get down towards freezing. Um and some areas where it shows sort of one or two degrees, it could stay three or four degrees. So it's going to be a lot of local variation. So this is why I say there is a chance for really anywhere where it's showing sort of three or four degrees below to be seeing a frost. And you see where it says seven or eight degrees. That's just where the UK Met Office run is predicting some thicker cloud, keeping those temperatures up by a few degrees. So if that cloud doesn't form, which is likely uh, or is probable, there's quite a decent chance of the cloud it doesn't form exactly there, maybe forms a little bit further east or doesn't form at all if that does happen the areas but show six seven to eight degrees could drop down to two or three degrees so this is why especially with these overnight temperatures it's very difficult to forecast but generally there is a chance that quite a few people could wake up to cold conditions tomorrow morning if not a frost but the good thing is as soon as the sun starts to rise around 7 8 a.m that 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 frost um, and that colder air does warm up very very quickly, and by sort of nine a.m. by most at the start of most working days, it's around seven to ten degrees. So it's not feeling too cold, but it's overnight. If you are out in, 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 late at night, or if you have plants out there, it could be a little bit dangerous for them. But Wednesday afternoon, maybe again 13, 14, 15 degrees, but more widely 10 to 13. And by Wednesday night into early hours of Thursday, again, chance of quite a widespread frost for some, especially for northern England, southern Scotland and northern Ireland as well, but even into parts of Midlands as well. And we see that continue. Thursday, not a particularly great day, maybe 16 degrees along the far south, but more widely again 12 to 14 degrees 
even colder for some. And it's this sort of continued situation where we see sunshine, temperatures around or maybe slightly above average, where we don't see sunshine below average, feeling chilly. Uh, that continues to Friday, where we see again a chance of a frost again across northern England, perhaps into the East Midlands as well. We see three, four degrees and Northern Ireland. And then through Friday afternoon, maybe more widely a little bit warmer, 16, 17 degrees with more sunnier spells. But overnight, again, with those clearer skies, we could see those temperatures fall away, particularly across the Midlands, perhaps into central southern England. You see one, two, three degrees. Where any of those little blues are showing up, that's where we could see frosts, especially rural areas. But it's going to turn a little bit milder through the weekend, 16, 17 degrees, and that's because that low pressure is coming in with a little bit milder air. And you can see overnight, the Sunday, very low chance of there being widespread cold conditions. Maybe the far southeast could see some chillier conditions. So you can see there is a chance of decent frosts over the coming few days and there's even higher chance next week as we'll see with the mid-range in a minute as we do have colder air potentially coming in increasing the chance of frosts and as i said in yesterday's video we have seen a shift from less cold low pressure to more cold higher pressure so still getting the chillier air masses in but more under the high pressure block which means less chance of really cold daytime temperatures because we're going to see less of a brisk wind and less cloud and less precipitation and showers but it increases the chance of frosts with more clear skies with more stagnant air so we do now have a look at the GFS, have a look at the longer range. You can see again, high pressure over the top of the UK at the moment with a northeasterly breeze. And this northeasterly breeze is the reason why we're cooling those temperatures down, because it's a colder air mass. The high pressure sits over the top of the UK, and that's why we're going to be seeing the frosts over the coming days with quite stagnant air, clear skies, it allows radiation, and that uh, and those temperatures to drop as soon as the sun does set. Beyond that, you see that little low pressure system through Saturday and Sunday embedded within the high pressure, and it moves through behind it. That's where we start to pull in northerly winds, and the GFS run doesn't get that much cold air in, but it does get a bit of a northerly flow in there for Monday, Tuesday, next week, for the first few days of May. And you can see most of that cold air is to our east, but we still tap into it, but we're more under higher pressure, so less, um, lesser winds meaning those temperatures will likely drop more overnight before high pressure does topple. And by the end of next week, we actually go into a westerly phase with low pressure moving through, but we've returned to the pattern we've had over the last few days in the last week or two with high pressure over the top and to our north, cut off low to our south and an easterly breeze. Now, one thing we do need to keep an eye on is that as we head through May, easterly winds are going to properly transition from being in March, bitterly cold, through April it's been chilly but not crazy cold and by the time we get to may june time or especially middle of may into june time june time it's going to turn warm because the continent will warm up and if we do have a look at the upper air temperatures we'll run it back and then we'll have a look at that easterly wind you'll see it is turning warmer you see chilly upper air conditions at the moment and we get that high pressure building and even with some warmer air masses towards the end of the week it's still going to feel chilly out there before that low pressure system comes in with a little bit of warmer air, before we do see that cold air come in from the north for a period, especially along the east, but not as widespread as we had initially anticipated. But as we'll see with the other models in a minute, they have that cold air shifted potentially further westwards. Before we do see that topple, high pressure build back in after this little low moves through and we do start to put in an easterly breeze but you can see it's actually warmer air coming in the five degree ice firm coming into the far southeast and it could lift those temperatures up if you look at the temperature deviation a little bit above average potentially in the southeast so meaning those temperatures could lift up into low 20s even though it is typically an easterly wind that would be cold a month or two ago so it is we have to we have to keep an eye for that transition if we do run it back to when we do see those colder winds coming from the north you can see the blues are involved quite a lot over the next couple or well, next week or two um so that is something you do need to keep an eye on of course and at the moment you can see we are in the blues and you see that real cold air is just to our northeast and that's where all this air is originating from it's not going to be that cold by the time it reaches the uk but that sort of air mass so we do have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare. Again, northeasterly winds at the moment. We do start to pull in um, uh, that high pressure up towards Greenland. We start to pull that northerly wind down, more of a direct northerly air from the GM in a week's time. Colder air masses building in with the higher pressure if we do uh, go back into more of a westerly phase. But with cold air spilling out of the Arctic, who knows what will happen after this, whether we do see colder air fill in uh, as that low is very weak at, in the middle of the Atlantic. If you do look at these upper air temperatures, you'll see much colder air does filter in. You see it's chilly over the next few days. High pressure 
around. Um, and then as we head towards the start or the weekend at the start of next week, you see that low pressure system does move through. And we go into a northerly wind with very cold air spilling down many areas, especially the east, lasting a good day or two. Even the zero degree ice firm getting through, which is just the greens, is cold enough to produce frost. But get that minus five line through, high chance we see um, quite quite severe frost, essentially quite widespread. Beyond that, westerly winds move back in. You can see again, very cold edges to our north, mild edges to our south. So it could spin this low up, and it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. But you can see firmly to our north, that cold air really is running out. Because we look back at zero, you see all these purples um, and pinks, and they do dissipate over the next 10 days. So the real, this is the last sort of week or two of proper Arctic cold before we head into uh, proper summer, where we have very, very little cold air to our north. So do finally... For the mid-range, have a look at the ECMWF before we have a look at the ensembles. Again, you can see high pressure at the top of the UK, a bit of an easterly flow, but nothing too crazy. That low pressure system moves through, and then we go into a northerly wind. Colder air does spill in for all, and by the end of the run, we're under high pressure, cold high pressure, as we'll see in a minute. Big overnight frosts are likely with that. Again, run it back and look at those upper air temperatures. Again, chilly air at the moment. Low pressure running through and the bitterly cold air does run in. Now, as I said, it is end of May or end of April, early May. So, yes, it is quite a cold air mass. It's not going to feel amazingly cold at the surface. It's going to be very cold for this time of year to hide the highs of high single digits, maybe 10, 11, 12 degrees further southwards. But it's going to be those overnight frosts. So you see real cold air mass. And look at, that, look at that temperature deviation. A good 6 to 8 degrees below average. Potentially even 10 degrees below average for this time of year. Very cold indeed. And as of course, overnight clear skies and frosts are likely. So you finish up, have a look at the ensembles. We'll briefly go through these as they are very similar over the last few days. Chile at the moment returning to around average by the end of this working week as we see that little low pressure system move in and then turns chillier than average for the start of next week. And there's a bit of uncertainty whether we see those temperatures return to around average, what some of the ensembles are doing, and some of them drop much lower. Now the GFS is a bit more pessimistic with seeing that cold air from the north, still chilly conditions, but not uh, quite optimistic with it coming that proper Arctic air mass, getting down to minus five, still maybe a quarter to a third of the ensemble members from the GFS doing that, but more are just around average really, and we stay around or below average for the foreseeable future, but with more low pressure involved with higher precipitation. If we do have a look at the ECM WF run, have a look at the 850 HPA temperature and precipitation. Um, if we do get this to load, you can see below average at the moment, return to around average, and then drops well below average again, all the way for the last day of April and the first few days of May. And then as it gets towards the 3rd or 4th of May, as that northerly wind plunges in, you can see maybe half the ensemble members, including the operational run, get back into a very cold air mass. Some can be going very cold. Others stay around average. So it is uh, quite a bit of uncertainty exactly how cold that air does get. But one thing we are for certain is it's going to be chilly it's going to be colder than average and there are going to be widespread frosts around for some especially in rural areas and if we do get that proper air mass through we could be seeing quite widespread minus one minus two minus three degrees even into city centers so we'll have to keep an eye on that over the next couple of days we'll have that ironed out i suspect it's going to be somewhere in the middle we're going to see chillier air mass not quite as cold as sort of minus five to minus six minus eight degrees maybe in the far north and maybe the far east but the majority are probably going to be in the sort of minus two minus three degree air mass which is going to be cold enough for frosts they just have to depend again on exact locations exact cloud amounts so we'll have to see but it does look like of course the trend is chilly reasonably dry potentially a, uh, precipitation towards the weekend for northern areas and western areas and beyond that there will be convective showers around of course but nothing too crazy at this stage so anyway thanks for watching make sure you do take the necessary precautions if you do have uh, vulnerable plants um, out in the garden to frosts as it's likely there will be regardless of it does get to a proper frost there are going to be very cold temperatures around so if you are uh, concerned make sure you do take the necessary precautions and do stay safe out there as there could be some icy stretches um, especially if you're getting up early in the morning or are, are up late at night because of course it is unexpected being this late in the year so that's it Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.